Hello, everybody. It's Several Total Four for another weekly update. First of all, um, as the water wraith keep pointing out, pointing it, point keeps pointing out in my updates, that balloon, that balloon has it's starting to. I think it's going to gain sentience. I've had it since my birthday, since a week before my birthday, which was December fourth. So I've had it since the beginning of December. It's now mid-February, so December, January, two and a half months old. And I checked it out. It's about a third deflated if you press into it. Maybe a quarter deflated. So it's it's going to be there for a while. That thing is a trooper. It is a trooper. Um, so yeah. So, what's going on? What's going on? And I say, hey! No. Nope. 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 Not gonna subject you guys to that. Uh, yeah, so let's play stuff. Skylander Swap 4 is still going strong for more years. That, that let's play is probably gonna be, I don't know, 50 uh, ish parts. I'm assuming 40, 40, 50. Uh, this week, la well, last week I finished uh, Link's Awakening DX. If you haven't watched that, go do it right now. Do it. Go, go. Well, I guess you could finish watching this first. Um, and uh, this coming week we're going to be starting We Love Katamari, the sequel to Katamari Damashi. Uh, if you didn't see the intro video reveal thingy, it's up on my channel. Check it out. It's a funny... It's the intro to the game. It's good stuff. I love it. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Uh, Katamari games are just fun. So, yeah. Uh, I actually uh, I have all the Katamari games except for the one on the Vita, I think, at this point. Uh, cause there's, for the PS2, there's Katamari the Machine, Wheel of Katamari. Uh, Xbox 360 has Beautiful Katamari. Um, PlayStation 3 has, uh, Katamari Forever. PSP has Me and My Katamari. Um, I don't think that there's another one on there, but the PS Vita has Touch My Katamari. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on now, touch my Katamari. The doors thing. Um, so, yeah, so once I get a Vita, except I don't know if I'll be able to let's play that because the Vita doesn't have video out, and the only way to really record it that people say is, um, you know, getting a capture board for it, which is expensive. Although, to record a Katamari game, it might just be worth it. No, it's not. Um, I mean, I... Th my, my thoughts on that, like, I, I don't have Vita, so I can't confirm this, but I thought that the Vita had a way to play the games through the PS3, like, stream stream them or something. And if it streams it from that to your PS3 into the TV, the PS3 has to use cables. And so shouldn't you be able to hijack the signal with a capture card the same way that you do with the system? I don't know. That may not be how it works, and I'm... Because otherwise... That's probably how Super Genius would record his Persona stuff, unless it, yeah, unless it only works with some games, uh, that have like some sort of crossplay. I don't, I don't, I have no idea how it works. I really don't. So, um, so that's not gonna happen. Sorry. Uh, I started playing Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII, which is also a PSP game. Got, uh, you know, I showed you this last, or last or two weeks ago. You know, it's a. Uh, uh, prequel to Final Fantasy 7 takes place, I would say, five years. It takes it takes place, uh, you know, before the uh, events leading up to Final Fantasy 7. So, you know, it's uh, how eventually, I guess, how Zack and Cloud meet. You play as Zack through the game. Uh, the game is interesting so far. Uh, I've played a couple hours into it. Uh, I like the, the graphics are really nice. The PSP has really nice graphics compared to, let's say, you know, Game Boy Advance because it uses discs and stuff. Um, I mean, it's not comparable to Game Boy Advance. I mean, the DS. Um, cutscenes are, are pretty. 
it's not coming out of my nose. Um, the uh, the combat instead of it being a typical or or not typical like instead of being it like Final Fantasy VII's turn based, uh, I would say it's more akin to Kingdom Hearts. Um, you get into battles like when you're walking around, you don't see the enemies on the field. You get into randomish battles, non-random battles. I don't know how it works. I think it's random because sometimes I get into battles like every other step. You know, it's just like. <laughs> Uh, it has this really annoying thing, it's like, combat mode started, combat resolved, like every single time you get into a battle, it's so annoying, but, um, so it's like Kingdom Hearts, you know, you can move around on the field, your enemies move around, there's a dedicated defend button, a uh, dodge button, like in Kingdom Hearts, um, you use the L and R buttons to cycle through commands, attack, whatever material you have equipped, uh, you can only equip a few at a time, though, like two or three. Um, any special moves, like there's, there's, uh, you have HP, MP, and AP. And the AP, um, the MP is obviously for material and stuff. AP is ability points. You use that for, is like yellow abilities, which is like a twister slash and things. And then there's this little slot going in the corner the whole time during the battle, and every so often it gets something that helps you out. It can make you invincible or null damage or not use up MP or. Uh, sometimes, you know, every so often you get this, like, special, special slot, and it lets you level up. That's how you level up. You get SP, those whatever points for that, and, uh, every so often it, the, the slots level you up. I, I have no idea how it works. I'll research it more for the eventual LP. Um, but, yeah, the combat is pretty fun, though. Uh, it lets you use strategy or just lets you press X to win. Your attack is like a combo thing and uh, boss fights do require some strategy like if you go behind an enemy you know you do more damage because they're not you know guarded in the, in the back and uh, you can avoid attacks and things and it's nice. I, I was kinda hoping for a Final Fantasy 7 turn based thing especially with more party members but you know, because you're just Zack. It's not like uh, Kingdom Hearts where you have, you know, two other characters like Goofy and Donald um, controlled by AIs. At least at the point that I'm at. Uh, I should have read the uh, manual thingy to see if you get more party members. I don't think you do, though. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty fun. Uh, it's like I said, the, uh, the graphics are nice. Uh, the music is... Um, mostly at the points that I've been seeing mostly like uh, uh, heavy metal arrangements of the Final Fantasy music which is it works it works I mean I you know the original it's more ac it's a more actiony game so it has more actiony music as opposed to Final Fantasy 7 which was an RPG and you know it was it had a lot of laid back stuff um, you do get to explore a bunch of Midgard you know, Shinra Tower and stuff. You know, Zack is a sol starts out as a soldier second class. And uh, it's funny seeing, like, some of the characters. You know, since it's a prequel, it has a lot of characters and from the game. And you're like, uh, or from flashbacks or characters you've never seen before. So you could be like, he dies, that guy lives. Don't make any long-term plans, sir. And since it's uh, voice acted in parts, you get to hear how things are pronounced. Like, the Mako reactors are actually pronounced Mako, because it's Japanese. And uh, Tsang of the Turks is Tsung, which makes more sense if you think about how the word it would be in uh, Chinese. I think it's, he's supposed to be Chinese, maybe. I don't know, Chinese or Japanese, it doesn't matter. But uh, T-S-E-N-G would be Tsung in that language. You also get to see him without a long flowing hair, just a little ponytail. <sighs> Sephiroth is in the game too. That's why I bought it. No, that's not why I bought it. But yeah, it's uh, so far so good. It's uh, it's fun. Zack is a funny character. Um, he's very impulsive. And you also get to meet 11 year old Yuffie. Oh, it's adorable!
Because in Final Fantasy VII, she's 16, which is creepy when you think... I mean, because in Japanese, the age of consent is 16, but you can date... Her. She could be one of the people you go on the date and build up a relationship with in Final Fantasy VII, so it's kind of creepy. Because all the other characters are, like, 20 or 21. Um, but yeah, look at 11-year-old Yuffie. She's like, bam, bam, take that bad guy, wee! <laughs> so funny. I love it. I love it. Uh... She shows up more. And you, there's, like, all these, like, mission things you could do when you're at save points, which uh, are completely optional, but give you good stuff. So, as I'm playing, I'm formulating how I would work it all out. But, yeah, so that's enough of me talking about Crash the Score of Final Fantasy VII. Or is it? No, it is. Sephiroth doesn't like me talking too much about the game where he's not the main character. Uh, last night, Proton John had a uh, like subscriber stream, like for the people who are subscribed to him on Twitch. Stop it, nose! My God, my nose is just—it's all the everything. Um, so, like, um, people who are subscribed could get in on the games. Only people who are subscribed, and he also was like having, like, uh, every you know round of game or whatever. He would switch up the people in the call with subscribers. So I got to be in the second to last call. It was awesome. I was I was there and I was talking to Proton John and and Luca Jane and uh, Secret Fury, you know the person on Twitter. Some of you know. Um, she's also on YouTube. She's a good person. Uh, so it was really cool. It's cool. I got, I got to talk to them. They were playing cards against humanity, which made it more awesome. And people were like putting all these pictures like the whole time pictures of of john's face on various things you know john and ada wong john on spaghettios uh john's face on the train that uh sabin suplexes in final fantasy 6 it was it was it was so many works of art it was beautiful but uh yeah so that was really nice to be part of that uh I, I, I didn't expect to uh, get a chance. I was like, it's the second time I made that face in this video. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so in more sobering news. Uh, so this week, I'm going to be getting scans Wednesday and Thursday uh, to see what the State of the Union is. Um, Wednesday, I get an... Uh, something called an MIBG injection. Luckily I have a thingy over here so they don't have to poke me and uh, I have like a, a permanent uh, IV in my chest that they surgically installed when I would got treat started getting treatment back in May. Um, yeah in May because my surgery was in April. So uh, you know, like whenever I go in for, for treatments or whatever, they could just use that as a, as an IV line instead of having to stick one in my arm every single time, which is nice. Um, problem is I'm pretty much tethered to the hospital because of that. Uh, you know, it's, there's a hole in my chest with a plasticky thing coming out that ends in, you know, an IV. Um, it has like a, um, a cloth type dressing over it it's it's air it's air sealed so it doesn't get infected that's the point of the cloth dressing but it has to be changed once a week every single week you know no matter what um otherwise you know it starts peeling off and things like that uh and i can't get it wet because then it'll start peeling off and infection and infection is bad that can kill you really easily especially people who are undergoing chemo are usually immunocompromised so infection is really bad which is why i haven't been you know out in public a lot or in public -y areas it's probably good that i didn't go to mag end up going to magfest because that could have ended really badly for me um as those those places are just so much infection and disease um so yeah, but I'm, I, you know, I can't, I can't take a shower, I can't go swimming, um, things like that. So I'm pretty much, you know, I'm tethered to the hospital and I can't go on long trips or anything. So uh, it's not fun. It's not fun. I wouldn't recommend it. 
<laughs> wouldn't recommend any of this even to my worst enemy um yeah so so the injection is like a, a radioactive dye uh, whose half-life is like um, 12 hours or something uh, and the dye is uh, the MIBG dye uh, specifically uh, gets uh, like an uptake by um, neuroblastoma which is what I have um, like that's what they it specifically goes to that which is like the main way that they with neuroblastoma the main way that they track it is with seeing how much uptake there is because uh, if neuroblastoma takes this dye up that means it's still alive and the more alive it is the more dye it will take and then the scan that I get the next day you know the spot it just shows like spots and they're brighter or or dimmer depending on how alive the specific sites are um, so I'm getting injection for that uh, on Wednesday and the scan is going to be Thursday morning. Wednesday I'm also getting an MRI because it's nice to see what the how bright and stuff it is but the MRI shows specifically if there's anything uh, you know what what the actual size of of the growths and things are so um, so that's gonna be fun. The, the, since I'm you know six foot three uh, the uh, MRI which is chest all the way down pretty much uh, always takes about three hours <laughs> three hours in an MRI tube is not fun whatsoever oh my god and since I have rods in my back they have to put me in a special MRI and uh, they put like all these stuff on me and it's not fun so that's gonna be this week so next Sunday you guys will hear whether it's good news and we're staying the course or if it's not as good news and we have to switch things up uh, so that's that's gonna be nice I'm being sarcastic my uh... let me just take that <clears throat> my philosophy through all these things is uh... I'm a realist. Just generally in life, I'm a realist. I, I don't usually get my hopes up or get hyped about things. When I do, it's for very good reasons. Like some video games, I get very hyped over because I just know that it's going to be great. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm generally a realist. Uh, I don't I don't try to see things for more or less than they are. Um, generally lean towards towards pessimism but uh, I don't I don't really you know get into the pessimistic rut of everything is everything is horrible you know I, I try to I try to think things through everything which is not always good sometimes thinking everything is bad but generally I find in life it's better than not thinking always almost always Sometimes you gotta be spontaneous, but eh, this works for me. But um, so I'm a realist, you know. I think to myself, am I feeling better? No, not really. Am I feeling worse? No, not really. So that could be good or bad. It could be good because uh, the first time that we got scans after starting this new treatment, I didn't feel any better, but there was a reduction in uh, the tumor size. So. Uh, but the second time I got the scans, it wasn't a reduction. It was it was stable, which is also good. Don't get me wrong. I am perfectly happy with stability, but it's been a lot longer between scans this time, so stability wouldn't necessarily be a good thing. Um, it would mean that whatever's whatever I'm taking, or what I'm taking, is not working positively. It's just preventing anything from progressing which I'm still happy that it wouldn't be progressing but we at this point we have to see at least some results it doesn't have to be big it doesn't have to be you know like a, we'll start watching Breaking Bad and after one round of treatment they're like there's an 80% reduction in your tumor and I was like that's not fair but um yeah, so just as any anything would be would be 
good though. Um, it would mean that uh, all the months of this have been for something, uh, not just stalling. So, um, and if it uh, if it turns out it hasn't been helping, uh, I'm gonna be seeing the doctor after the scans, obviously, and we're gonna talk about you know options, uh, what. Uh, what we're going to be doing, you know, there's always, he, he is always, um, the doctor I have is the, like the leading, you know, professional expert person on this, so, uh, I'm in good hands, you know, he has a whole bunch of different, you know, treatment stuff, but, like, the, the clinical trial I'm taking now, we're hope, hoping that it'll help, but, you know, I said beforehand, there's like a, you know, 40% chance, you know, there's the, we've had a 40% success rate with this. So, you know, you know, the doctor's job is not to get your hopes up because that is a stupid thing to do and it's unprofessional. And I greatly appreciate that he is also a realist in this. He is also optimistic. Like I said, I don't know if I said it, but, um, hope for the best, expect the worst, you know, plan for the worst. Uh, but you know he's you know he never tries to get our hopes up with things but when he sees good results then you know he makes sure to tell us this is good um, but he never says this is horrible or you know he never tries to to downplay things or or exaggerate things which is really nice um, but uh, you know he's always very very calm very professional so it's good um, but uh, you know, I guess it's a moment of truth type of thing, but, uh, you know, if this does, if this ends up not working, there's, there's other avenues for us to take. Um, there's not ones that I'm looking forward to that are quite a bit more painful sounding than what I'm doing now, but, um, gotta try everything, gotta try everything. Um... He, he, he asked me a question about, you know, I have to think, for me to think about, you know, how things are going now. You know, how would I be going further, you know, the same exact course? You know, barring, barring results, you know, how would I feel, you know, continuing on the, the cycles that I'm doing? You know, a week of, of uh, chemo being ferried back and forth, not feeling very well. And then uh, a week of intestinal problems, pretty much at home afterwards, and then a, and then a week uh, fine, and then back. You know, three week cycles. You know, having to come in for, uh, for blood work and get things dressing changed and things. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about that. Um, it's definitely livable. The problem is that that's not an answer. It's not an answer. Um, I'm used to it isn't an answer either because I, I, I don't like change, but I'm also when, when stuff like this is presented to me, I'm able to just bear it. Um, you know, this, this form of treatment, I don't feel like I'm dying like I was with the, uh, with the hard hitting chemo. You know, I don't feel like, uh, uh, I'm sitting in bed, uh, uh, decaying from just how, how awful I feel. Um, it's still pretty bad during the chemo week. You guys on Twitter, whatever you see, I, I can get really nasty and, and, uh, uh, depressive. But that's just because I feel really, I feel horrible. It's not something, it's not something that I can describe accurately to people that haven't experienced it. And it's not something that I wish to really. Um, but, you know, so it's, it's bad, but, you know, a couple of days after, after, you know, the in, the, the outpatient treatments end, uh, I'm, I'm fine. Aside from the intestinal stuff that just makes me go to the bathroom a lot. Which I don't want to talk about here either. Uh, you know, it's you know, I I generally you know I get to record still. Um, I get to keep up on Twitter and YouTube and things like that. Um, 
I need to I need to do some sort of physical therapy or something because I'm my stamina is is so bad. It's it's hard for me to uh you know to walk around for any length of time. But that's you know because of the uh, of the the back surgery was a start, but also just because of the chemo, I I I haven't been able to be up and around for seven months now. So it's just, it's very hard to, to get out anywhere. And when I do, it's nice, but I always end up exhausted. But um, I don't, you know, as I am now, I have more of an opportunity to get up and do that. I have two out of every three weeks. Um, and I don't know how it would be if I had any other treatment plans. I can't see, you know, it, anything being better you know, easier with other treatment plans, you know, this is the best opportunity that I have, so I don't know if I would want to, you know, switch if it was like a, well, if you want to or not, you know, if it was like a, well, this isn't working, that's obviously the choice, but if it's like a, a question of convenience, I, I don't know if I would want to change. Um... It's really, it's not an easy choice. It's not a choice that people like to make, you know. Uh, the lesser of the two evils, as it were. But, um... It's... I don't know. I, I guess, I guess if given, if, if, if it was a 50-50 choice... Or if it was just if it was just a hypothetical question like how are you doing I'd say you know this is livable I have been living uh, through this kind of <laughs> I'm I'm alive enough in in my taste I guess um, it's a very strange question to answer it's it's not something that that it's easy to answer with with just a single question you have to really think about but um i'm very much looking forward to one day you know being able to go more than a few weeks without uh without having to go to a hospital being able to run my hands through my hair things like that right now i have just a little tiny maybe eighth of an inch you know, hair growth in a few places, so it, it could just, you know, it's a little fuzzy. But, uh, yeah. This has been a long weekly update, and I'm sorry. Uh, if you've watched this far. I'm just, be I've been very depressive. For some reason, this, this round, it's because of the, it's because of the, um, the scans. I just, uh, it's like a countdown to judgment day it's I, I get very very stressed out um, when there's like a specific date this is when we're going to see what is because I have no idea you know how things are and it's scary it scares the hell out of me um, so I ask that you guys you know this week you know for those of you keep me in your thoughts prayers things uh, just you know good results because even if nothing's been happening you know it could miraculous something could miraculously happen over the next couple of days that that will change everything and uh yeah you never know you never know um so yeah i hope you guys have a good week look forward to cat the maddie it's gonna be fun 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 and uh let's uh here's to good things in the future goodbye everybody bye bye